Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bella Gamer, and I'm going to kind of summarize my feelings and my opinions on the playtest, but I do want to preface this video first with it is a playtest. Paizo is well known for sometimes just putting things in the playtest that they know won't work well just to see what the player feedback is. So don't take the playtest. I don't I can't believe we have to say this every time. Don't take the playtest as it's set in stone. There's going to be changes, whether they're small changes, whether they're big changes. So hold your final opinions until the class is actually released sometime next year. Though, do give your current opinions through the playtest forum stuff, which I will be putting in the description here, where you can go and put in your thoughts on the playtest and the individual classes and to see if, you know, the things you like make it into the final edition for both the Animist and the Exemplar. Speaking of the new classes, my general opinions are thus. The Animus has some interesting features, but it feels like it's a big grab bag of class features from other classes. So what it kind of feels like is a big amalgamate class that, while it does have some defining features, even those defining features, I don't feel like flesh it out enough to make it truly unique. What I mean is the apparitions are interesting, but they feel kind of like sorcerer bloodlines in a way. You get a skill, you get extra spells added to your repertoire, and then they come with a focus spell. And you get four of these at once. So essentially you get four sorcerer's bloodlines at the same time. And while that sounds like it, it steps on the toes of sorcerer a bit, the the biggest thing with sorcerer is your ability to choose your spells, right? And that's where the that's where the animus kind of gives a lot of their power away in a sense where they only get two spell slots per spell level for their divine spell list, for the the divine spell tradition that they can pick pretty much anything that they have access to on that list. The apparitions just have a single spell added for each. And so what the animus misses in its spell variety or the ability to choose a lot of spells for for the animus, it makes up for by having just a lot of spells. And they're all also signature spells, which is also supposed to be a thing that like a lot of repertoire casters are known for, but they just like. Oh, all of our spells are repertoire spells. It makes it feel like signature spells are a much cheaper thing. Even though you don't get much of a choice, again, at, at per spell level, at most, you're looking at, I think, six apparitions in the game, maybe eight apparitions in the game that you can select from. Six spells per spell level. That's not a lot of choice. So I understand. The balance feels good. I don't think like animists is a very broken class. I feel like the Sage is just kind of the worst of the two choices starting out. It gets better, but with a level eight feat. And so I wish Sage just had something that wasn't just, I ignore control effects because well, that can be good. It's just a niche niche situation. And most GMs aren't pushing a bunch of charm effects on your animist, right? It's, you come up with this, it, turns into a situation of you start throwing in more control effects because you have an animus that can resist it or there's not an animus that is a sage and you just don't do control effects and so you're not actually getting anything from the apparition's possession i think is what it's called so yeah it's just rough and someone actually in my comments made a good point where if you want to get the most out of the apparition's possession you have to spend an action every round to do it. And if you're sustaining one of your apparition spells, that's a two action load for a class that its biggest thing is that they have a bunch of sustained focus spells. They're already action intensive. And then apparitions possession just feels much more, ap 
much more uh, of a action load, you know? So it just doesn't feel that good in my opinion, uh, especially if you're doing like Peerless Under, or not Peerless Under Heaven, uh, especially if you're doing the Witness of Ancient Battles to make yourself into a martial style of character. The Sage just has too big of an ac action load to really get the most use out of it. And thus, it just feels too clunky to work appropriately. Chandler is fine. Uh, I I feel like Chandler just kind of completely nerfs the whole aspect of swapping apparitions on a short rest kind of deal, though, because they can just swap them at will. It's something that like it's like, here's a class feature. Oh, but we're ignoring it for w one of the two subtypes and honestly the one that tends to work a little bit better so even though it's not unbalanced i should say spending an action to gain access to a different focus spell is actually a little rough in my opinion so yeah that's that's just the thing when it comes to the animist is it feels like it has a lot of features from other classes and it doesn't feel like it works super well there's also the, the idea that like, oh, so the Animus has a better transformation style, essentially. They can be a better polymorph class than the Druid can, which should have been like the premier, the premier class to do so. Even though Druid is actually supposed to be the primal spellcaster, that is their whole thing. It makes one of the Druid subclasses feel like if you're just going to do polymorph battle form stuff, you should just be an Animus instead. Even though I know they're missing a lot of the battle forms, I know they don't have as many battle form options. It doesn't mean that it matters all that much when the animists one will just perform better, even though their polymorph spells are a sustained spell. So they have to spend an action to maintain it. Again, it has that balance, but I feel like the feel of the class is just off. You know, it feels like it kind of encroaches on a lot of other classes, but is also more restricted when it does so. And even though that is balanced, and I don't think Animus is stronger than... I don't think an Animus is actually stronger than a Druid. I think that they're both pretty equal. I just feel like for something that a lot of Druids want to do, Animus kind of does a little bit better, and that feels kind of bad. And the same thing for like the the sorcerer's bloodlines or the fact that animus just have more spell slots than most other spellcasters that are uh, in the automatic like they don't have to learn their spells for instance kind of category. And I'd even mention as well, but the whole fact that all a lot of their focus spells are also sustained spells also again steps on the toes of the witch, which is a class that has a bunch of hexes that they're supposed to sustain every round and that's kind of their thing so what is unique to the animist i think the apparitions are a really good way of doing this i i like the fact that each apparition gives access to some spells and each apparition gives unique lores that it can share and you know even focus spells i i think it's all good and i think that even if animus were to release as is today it would work well enough. I just, it, it just, it's just something that I noticed when I was looking at it. It's like, that kind of feels like this class or that class or whatever. And that's not how a new class should feel, I guess. A new class should feel like something a lot more wholly unique. Like, you didn't look at Psychic and be like, oh, Psychic is just a slightly worse spellcaster with slightly stronger cantrips. That's not what it was. It was, oh, wow, this class has really, really good cantrips. They augment some of the cantrips already in the game and make them awesome. And this class is very focused on the focus points. But it has less spell slots. You know, it doesn't feel like I need, I'm need. i comparing Psychic to another spellcaster because it is, you know, unique. It's kind of like the same problem that Witch had against Wizard where a Wizard could have the same level of familiar as a Witch even though that's kind of the witch's big thing, which is fixing that, obviously. But that's just what a lot of the complaints were around witch, and I feel like Animus will have some similar, I guess, uh, feedback in that regard. Let's not get done talking about the Animus. Let's talk about the Exemplar. The Exemplar, I feel, is just good. It's a very, very good class, and I'm very excited to see it added to the game. 
I think the game needed another martial class. And honestly, even though it's slightly more complex than a fighter, as far as like having to deal with your icons and where your divine spark, which one it's nested in, and the sheer amount of imminent and transcendent abilities you can give each of your items. I feel like it in the end works out really well and players can strike a really good balance that is both simple enough to understand while simultaneously powerful and feels engaging with your character and the style. And not only that, but I really like the way that how you don't it's not spending actions to getting powers as much. You can just use the transcendent abilities to do a thing that you would probably already want to do. And that can also shift your spark into another one of your items i feel like there's really good ways to make it play that makes it feel just buttery silky smooth you know so i feel like these exemplars are good now i did mention in one of my uh for one of the feats in that two hour video that there's just a feat that lets you attack all enemies on the battlefield at your current multi-attack penalty because it, it uses the first range increment of your weapon and you know what i'll Double check just to be sure I'm not crazy, but I'm pretty sure there's some range weapons that have like a a first range increment of like 120 feet, even if there wasn't right. Even if it was more of a uh, like 60 feet, for instance. I still think that, yeah. The. Let's see here. Yeah, range 60 feet. So, yeah, the heavy crossbow has a range of 120 feet. Most bows or guns have at least 60 feet. Uh, many, many having a lot more. I think even the longbow has a range of 100 feet. So every enemy within 100 feet of your character that you can see it just allows you to attack all enemies on the battlefield at once. And the fact that other classes need to spend a similar level feat to be able to attack all adjacent enemies is a little too powerful, in my opinion. So Exemplar has some feats, I think, kind of overstretched the balance that they wanted for the game. But beyond that, I think the Exemplar is good. I think the Exemplar is good, and it does some unique things that other classes doesn't. First and foremost... It makes your equipment feel more like a part of your character. A lot of players, when they're getting items and we're like, oh, this is good. This gives me a cool ability. They like the ability and what it does for them more than the actual piece of gear itself. The exemplar makes an item more important to you. You know, it's not just a, a item that gives you benefits. It's an item that is also like a key of your power. So... It's something that I think makes the exemplar feel really good. It makes all your gear, or at least the your three icon gear anyway, feel like an actual part of your character. And it feels like a good class that maybe it's a step up in difficulty from, from fighter, but it's not such a high step up that it feels bad. You know what I mean? So I... I want to say that the Exemplar is good. Some of the feats, obviously, I think need to be pulled back a little bit. But beyond that, Exemplar could almost release today, and I think it'd be good. Both of these classes, I feel like, could be released today, and they won't affect the balance of the game. And if my criticisms sound like they're a little too harsh to you, please understand, it's a playtest. They're asking for criticism. The whole point of the playtest is for someone to look at it and to give their opinion on it so they know what to do. They don't even have to listen to me. I'm not even demanding they make these changes. I'm just saying the things that come out to me, that speak to me, and overall, I think, speak to a lot of people. A lot of people in the comments of my videos kind of have a similar idea on these classes and where they sit. By the way, if you watch those videos, even like halfway through, thank you so much. <laughs> it's I know they're long videos, and I know a lot of people are super curious. But there are long videos. That's a big time commitment. So I appreciate even if you sit, sat down for like 40 minutes to watch those videos. Oh, no. I think the classes are good. I'm excited for the War of the Immortals and what these classes can mean for it. I think that with some tweaking, Animus is actually going to be made more interesting 
for its uh, actual release. So I'm very hopeful that Animus is going to feel a lot better when it comes out. The same kind of thing happened with like Witch and with the Kineticist. So I feel like they're going to tune it up and it'll be just fine. I trust Paizo to do what's right for the game. And these play tests are, of course, them just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. So to me, what stuck and what I think works really well is the animists and their use of apparitions or apparitions is good. It's nice to have a dynamic spellcaster that kind of can be changed every day to sit, fit the situation. I like how it was overall balanced. So I think what they were doing with the balance was good. But I, I will also say that I'm kind of tired of all these kind of complicated classes coming out. There's so many really complicated classes coming out for Pathfinder that I, I feel like someone's going to see these new classes, be really interested, and then, then just be completely thrown off base because they just don't work. It's not like Alchemist, right? Only some players would even be interested in Alchemist in the first place, but it's already a very complicated class. A lot of these classes sound really, really cool. And it's a it's a comment I hear a lot of, oh, that class I thought sounded really interesting, but I heard it's not good for me, is a very common phrase. And I feel like Paizo needs to pull back a little bit and make some simpler, more straightforward classes. I feel like Exemplar is actually a really good way to do that. Exemplar feels really good. I feel like the pacing at which you get each incremental new thing added to your character will make the Exemplar feel good. And I feel like even though it's a little bit more complicated than something like the Fighter or the Barbarian, I don't feel like it's something nearly as complicated as like the Thought Matures, right? So as far as Marshals are concerned, Exemplar is really good. It's a rare class, but I feel like it's a rare class that is only rare for the sake of the narrative. I don't think it's rare because it's more powerful. I just feel like it's a class that is rare because you're playing essentially a demigod and lore wise, that's a little hard. It's it's like, oh, I was just this poor little boy who grew up on the farm. And then I found out that my father was, you know, Zeus, you know, not every character story can start that way. You can't have a million exemplars running around. It just doesn't make sense for the setting. But I don't know. So Exemplar good, Animus I think just needs a little bit tweaking to make it feel more unique unless like it's trying to grab too much from other classes. But other than that, the balances are good. The classes feel really good. Some of the feats probably need to be tweaked a little bit, but overall, I think these classes are good. I can't wait to see them actually released and I can't wait to see the new stuff that the book they're going to contain is because I guarantee it's going to be a book. It might even be the mythic adventure book where we get finally rules for playing after level 20. I know a lot of people have been asking for that, even though most games don't get that far. Uh, people still want what they want. You know, people wanted a constitution class for no reason. So mythic levels is just kind of one of those things. Anyway. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Also, please check the description so that you can give your thoughts on the survey for the play test once you've kind of looked everything over and played with them a little bit. And hopefully we can make these classes better uh, for next year. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games and leave the bad luck to me. I'll see you all next time. Bye.